Hi there, my name is Karen Fabian and I'm the founder of Bare Bones Yoga and welcome to my YouTube channel. So if you've watched any of my videos over the years, you'll notice that my backdrop is different today and it's because I have moved. So bear with me if you're noticing any differences in the audio quality or the visual quality. Um, I am still working out the kinks. Please comment below with anything that you notice that you think it would be helpful for me to take into account as I get used to my new surroundings. So I wanted to do a quick video today to share a little bit about a concept in anatomy known as the roles that muscles play. This has to do with when a muscle is doing something, another muscle has to be allowing that something to be done. A really simple example of this is if you flex your elbow by using your bicep, your tricep has to allow your bicep to basically move your arm. If your tricep was contracting at the same rate and intensity as your bicep, your arm wouldn't move. So there's a bit of a give and take here, and this is in part the responsibility of the nervous system and the signals that are sent to the muscles. It's also a function of kind of this idea of using skeletal muscle for voluntary movement. I'm thinking, I want to bend my arm, and I do it, and in coordination with my nervous system, not only does my limb move, but these muscles work in um, a synchronistic way. Now, they don't work synchronous in a synchronistic way to do the same thing. In other words, they don't work collaboratively. Here, as I mentioned before, one is doing the work of flexing the elbow, the other is allowing it. There's still a contraction here, it's just that it's not as intense and it's more in a lengthening way, eccentric, versus a strengthening way, concentric. So there's a couple different examples that are germane to this idea. One example I can share with you is when hip flexors work as the agonist and gluteus maximus acts as the antagonist. Now, if some of these muscle names are unfamiliar to you, let's look at the skeleton and let's identify where they are. So the psoas is a major hip flexor. It runs from the lower back to the femur. The gluteus maximus is a major hip extensor. It's on the posterior portion of the hip. Generally speaking, you can kind of think of this whole back aspect of your pelvis being covered by your glute max. Now, if I'm in a posture where my hip is in flexion, like in warrior one, my psoas is working here. At the same time my psoas is working agonistically to flex my hip, my gluteus maximus is eccentrically lengthening uh, at the same time. If I do it on the converse side and we look at something a little bit different, I can say here my hip is in flexion, here my hip is in extension. So here the agonist is the psoas, here the agonist is the gluteus maximus. If I look at it in isolation, I can say here my gluteus maximus is the agonist, my uh, psoas is the antagonist. My psoas is lengthening, my glute max is contracting. Another good example, and certainly germane to yoga practice, is the coordination between the uh, anterior aspect and the posterior aspect of the upper body. So if I look at pectoralis minor and major on the front, and the rhomboids and the middle deltoids on the back, I can look at things like strengthening the rhomboids and the middle traps by adducting my scapula. In yoga, we often see this as the interlace the fingers behind the back cue. And when that happens, I'm using the rhomboids and the middle traps uh, from an agonistic standpoint, and I'm stretching my pec minor and my pec major. They are here, the antagonist, agonist, antagonist. However, if I am hunching, not a lot of poses where you ask people to hunch, but if I flex my shoulders and kind of rotate in a little bit, like you might see in a cat pose, I'm using pec minor and pec major agonistically, and at the same time, I'm eccentrically lengthening my rhomboids and my middle traps. So those are two really good examples of how you can look at a certain part of the body in a yoga pose and identify the muscles that are agonistically working and the muscles that are resisting that movement or essentially allowing it to happen by eccentrically lengthening. So this sounds like a mouthful. I hope that you were able to take some uh, nuggets out of it. What I would say if you're confused is first be sure that you can identify the muscles, the origin and insertion, and the primary action. 
Focus on the primary action, not necessarily the secondary and tertiary action. Once you have that part down, then look at how muscles work in these agonist-antagonistic pairs. It is a fun way to learn the muscles, not just the first time around. The first time around, you have to just kind of do the work of not really memorizing, but studying the muscles, their names, and those points I brought up before. Now, if you're looking for help with this, you'd be a great person to enroll in my signature program on anatomy called the Blueprint Learning Program. When you enroll in that program, which I open up monthly for enrollment, you'll get a full primer on not only the muscles, but how to apply all of the anatomy information to your teaching. In between enrollments, I always have my waitlist open, so you can go to my website, barebonesyoga.com, and you'll see the waitlist wait list link there. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Again, feel free to leave your comments. And until the next video, hit subscribe so you know when I post a new video. Thanks so much for watching. Namaste.